I'm Dr. Ralph Chu. I'm an eclipse chaser and I've experienced 25 solar eclipses of which 18 are total. Uh, what I'd like to do today is to show you how to set this telescope up so that you can safely view the Sun as well as take photographs with a uh, DSLR camera. So first of all you notice that I'm not pointing the uh, telescope at the Sun right now because I haven't got a solar filter in place. I have an example of a solar filter right here which is in a specially constructed cell that will fit onto the front of the telescope. And it's really important to remember that the filter has to be on the front end. Nothing in the way of a protective filter goes on the back end of the telescope assembly. So I'm just going to mount this in here first of all. And now we're ready to in fact point the telescope at the sun. My setup here uses a uh, automatic tracking system which will point the telescope to the Sun and then follow it through the duration of the eclipse. And it'll just take me a moment to actually uh, move the telescope over to the Sun. So let me just do that. And a lot of these automatic pointing devices will scream at you when you select the Sun because it'll remind you that you need to put the protective filter in place so you don't hurt your eyes or your equipment. So am I ready to slew this to the Sun? Yes I am. So there we go. It's on the way, and we'll just let that point to the sun for a moment. Won't take very long for it to actually get there. And there we are. And I'll just adjust the eyepiece so it's convenient for me to look. And when I do that, there we go. We do have the sun in place, so that's great. And uh, so we're ready to take a look uh, at the sun and uh, observe the eclipse. Now, if we want to uh, take a photograph, I'm going to remove the diagonal and eyepiece assembly. And let me just put that there on this tray, and I will take my camera, and this is all ready to insert into the telescope to shoot the sun. I have a T-ring which attaches to the digital SLR camera, and then I have the uh, camera mount that will insert in here. Notice also I have this right angle finder. This particular camera doesn't have a focusing uh, display that will uh, come out and move into various positions. So I have to use something like this in order to make sure that I'm aiming at the right place. And I'm just going to uh, use this to verify that I am in fact pointed properly at the sun. So I'll insert that there, tighten that mounting screw system so that I know that the camera is firmly in place and that's really important to make sure that you know that your camera is there otherwise it's going to drop out unexpectedly. And let me just take a look here and yes I've got the Sun in there and that's fine. Now one of the other things that I've got on the telescope which can be really handy for pointing the telescope at the Sun and also verifying that it's still pointing at the Sun is this little device up here. It has a pinhole on the front end and a small projection screen that I can view either from behind like this or look at from the top. And when the telescope is pointing directly at the Sun, the Sun's image will be uh, displayed on that projection screen. So it verifies that I am actually aimed in the right place. And once I've got that, the telescope will then continue to track uh, throughout the eclipse and I can just photograph uh, as I please. The other thing is that in order to prevent camera shake, a lot of digital SLR cameras will have some kind of remote triggering device so you can take the picture. In this case, I've got one of these devices that will plug into the camera and I can then just hit the button, change the uh, exposures as I need to, and go ahead and photograph the eclipse from partial phases right through totality if I'm lucky enough to be in the total uh, path and then right through to the end. Just remember that uh, the filter comes off at the diamond ring and comes back on at the second diamond ring at the end of totality. Really important to keep you from frying your camera sensor. Other than that, I think that's pretty much it. The important thing about this is practice, practice, practice. Because the eclipse, even though uh, it's almost three hours long from start to end, if you're uh, trying to photograph totality, it's a few minutes and they go by really quickly. You need to know what you're doing 
and uh, almost do it by instinct. So good luck on Eclipse Day. This is Dr. Ralph Chu saying clear skies. <laughs>